if I haven't met you yet, my name is Jose. I serve as the youth pastor uh, here on the team. Best job in the entire world. I get to hang out with middle schoolers and high school students, have fun with them, and tell them about Jesus. Uh, it's going to be a great Sunday uh, today. I'm really, really excited, really glad that you're here, and then really glad for those that are online uh, that are joining us as well. Would you guys open up your Bibles to Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3? That's where we're going to start off today. Uh, Ecclesiastes is in the Old Testament. Uh, it's right after Proverbs and before Song of Solomon. If you hit Isaiah and Jeremiah, you've gone just a little too far. And while you're doing that, I want to show you guys a couple photos from uh, uh, last Wednesday, we had our color war, which was a blast. If you don't know what a color war is, is we uh, take uh, colored powder um, and we just throw it at each other. We throw it at each other's face. We're all wearing white and don't worry, it's non-GMO, non-toxic, vegan, you know, all that stuff. Um, and so it was really, really fun here. Uh, just uh, students throwing it at each other and having a blast. Um, here, I remember this particular uh, moment uh, I was throwing it at this student in particular because he was talking during the message, and I was like, this is what you get for talking in the message. Um, and so that was really fun. Uh, here's a couple uh, more students and some more leaders uh, there. This leader in particular was getting really into it. He really, really loved it, um, and it was so fun. You can see all the powder on the floor and everything like that. They were trying to get me uh, here. Uh, and that was really fun. And then uh, this next photo here is a picture of one of our leaders. His name is Matt Lambert. And uh, I am very grateful for leaders like Matt Lambert and Heather and all the other leaders that show up week in and week out to invest in the next generation and to have fun with them. Uh, there's a saying that the next generation, uh, what this next generation needs other than Jesus is just one caring Adult, one caring adult to be able to walk alongside them, one caring adult to ask them how they're doing, one caring adult to be there when they need someone to talk to, just one caring adult. And I'm grateful for, again, leaders like Matt that can be that one caring adult for students at Legacy Youth. Here's a couple more photos uh, here. And then uh, we've also got, uh, we not only did we have fun on Wednesday, but we also had a time of worship and we also had a message, a message that was brought by Kyle, who was up here earlier. Uh, he brought in a great message. Students were on the worship team um, and it was such a blast. Students were worshiping and uh, really responding to the message. And we said that uh, this Wednesday uh, was the start of camp. That camp started on this particular Wednesday because it was just a powerful time and God was moving. And summer camp is a really amazing time. Not only is summer camp a place where students can have fun and there's the lake and there's the blob and there's the car shows and obstacle courses and archery and fireworks and helicopters and all those fun things, um, but it's also a place where these students can have an encounter with the true living God where they can experience freedom and wholeness, uh, freedom from depression and anxiety. Uh, camp was where I uh, rededicated my life to Jesus. Camp was where I felt called uh, into ministry, where I got my purpose. And camp is where I've seen students uh, just have a personal encounter with God. And so um, with that said, uh, Gary kind of talked about it a little bit that we can't do what we do without your generosity. And with camp coming up, camp's a little bit expensive with inflation and interest rates going up. Uh, camp's pretty expensive. And, and at Legacy, we don't want to turn down a student from going to camp because of finances. And so in the lobby, there's a wall um, with envelopes one through a hundred. Uh, many of them are gone. But um, if I could ask you to help sponsor uh, a student, uh, that would be very, very helpful. Uh, again, there's envelopes one through a hundred and you can pick whatever envelope you want, but whatever number you pick, that's the number that we ask that you would donate to help sponsor a student. So I'd be very grateful. The students would be very grateful if you would uh, just be willing to sponsor a, a student for that. Can we, can we do that? 
Amazing. Awesome. All right, so here we go. Uh, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3. This is going to be an interactive message a little bit. And so uh, as I'm reading this, when I don't say the word, that's when I ask you guys to say that word, okay? So here we go. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, starting in verse 1. It says, there is a time. Everyone say time. There's a time for everything and a season. Everyone say season. season. Season for every activity under the heavens. Now, this is where I need your help right quick. Um, a time to be born and a time to? Die. A time to plant and a time to? Die. A time to kill and a time to? Die. A time to tear down and a time to? Die. A time to weep and a time to? Die. A time to mourn and a time to? Die. A time to scatter stones and a time to? gather them, yes. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from. A time to search and a time to. A time to keep and a time to. A time to tear and a time to. A time to be silent and a time to. A time to love and a time to. A time for war and a time for. And verse 11 says, he has made everything, say everything, everything, beautiful in its time. Now, I'm only going to speak for about two hours, so get comfortable. Uh, the title, don't worry, I'm, I'm, if you're new, I'm just kidding, okay? I'll get you here in, in, in a quick jiffy. But the title of the message that I believe that God has for us is, It's Time. Everyone say, It's Time. It's time. Tell your neighbor and say, It's Time. It's time. Let me go ahead and let's pray. Jesus, we thank you so much for today, God. Pray that you would speak tonight, or this morning, God, that you would open up our hearts to receive the message that you have for us and do what only you can do this morning, God. We pray in Jesus' name. Everyone said? Amen. So like I said, I'm gonna, this is going to be a little interactive. What I want to do is I want to ask you guys a question, and I'm going to give you four options. And what I ask that you do is you would just vote for one of those options, okay? So the question that I have for you guys is, what is your favorite season? How many of you guys love the fall? You guys love fall, okay? A couple of you. What about spring? Spring? Yeah, okay, a little bit. What about winter? Winter, uh, barely anyone, and summer. There we go, yes. So every season has its own unique beauty and kind of the more annoying part. You've got uh, fall and the fall, the colors begin, or the leaves begin to change color and uh, women, you can wear your Ugg boots now and then pumpkin spice lattes come out and pumpkin spice creamer and all the pumpkin spice comes out. Um, but the negative side is that it begins to get colder and, uh, and if you're a homeowner, you're looking at this and you're like, I got to rake all those leaves. It's kind of the negative side of the fall. And then there's spring. Spring, uh, you've got all the colors start to come out and the weather starts to get warmer. But the negative side is those that have allergies. This is the time where you like die because you're just, the allergies are crazy. Uh, weeds begin to grow in your lawn. And then if it's anything like how it was uh, this spring, we have a lot of false springs, right? It gets warmer and then the temperature drops and it snows like five inches. And then it gets warmer and everything melts and then it gets cold and then it's rainy. And then it gets warmer and then it just constant cycle of this false spring. And then there's winter. Now we have snow comes and uh, it's, it's ski season and snowboarding season uh, and Christmas comes up, but the negative side is it gets cold and icy and, and it gets cold and icy and, and it gets cold and icy, right? Anyone with me? Um, but, uh, it, it, and then uh, for some of us, we kind of get seasonal depression because the, the sun isn't out as much. And then lastly, then it's my favorite season. This here is a picture of my backyard here. It's very, very beautiful. Um, and in summer, the weather gets warmer. Farmer's markets start to come out and it's great. And we can go in our boats and go into the lake and take all these summer vacations. And it's amazing. But kind of the negative side, it gets really, really hot. And it's a busy season because we have to go uh, camping and then family reunions and then go here and then go there and then go there. 
And all these seasonal changes remind us, I believe, that life is filled with change. There's change that we can control, like we can control changing the TV channel, we can control the clothes that we wear and changing that, and we can control and change the attitude, our attitude, but then there's also change that we can't control. The fact that we're uh, getting older and our age keeps going up, despite how much we wanna say that it's our 10th, 30th birthday, I'm sorry, you're turning 40 this year, okay? And so today what I wanna talk about is the times uh, that we can go through change and what God wants us to do as he's leading us through change. And we see throughout the Bible, there's many people that go through change and change is inevitable and it's not always easy. It can be hard and scary sometimes, but in the Bible, we see a lot of people going through change. We see Adam and Eve going through a change. They're leaving uh, the Garden of Eden after the fall. We see uh, Joseph going from a change of living in prison to now the palace. We see the Israelites going from the Exodus, uh, living in slavery to now being free. And then we see David going through a change of being a shepherd boy to king. And we see name changes like Simon, uh, his name being changed from Simon to Peter. And same with the apostle Paul, his name was Saul and then it gets changed to Paul. And today I wanna take a look at an individual uh, who went through a major change and see three things that we can do when God is leading us through this change. We're gonna take a look at the life of Abraham in uh, Genesis chapter 12. And so would you turn your Bibles over to Genesis chapter 12? That's where we're gonna uh, be taking a look at life of Abraham uh, here in Genesis chapter 12. 12, starting in verse one. Everyone say, it's time. Here we go. Genesis chapter 12, starting in verse one. And it says, the Lord said to Abram. Uh, now I'm gonna refer to Abram as Abraham because if you don't know, his name does get changed over to Abraham. So you'll, you'll hear me in the message, refer to Abram as Abraham. So the Lord said to Abram, go from your country, your people and your father's household to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you and I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife, Sarai, his nephew, Lot, and all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan and they arrived there. So uh, Genesis chapter 12 and parts of Genesis chapter 15 are part of uh, what's called the Abrahamic covenant. And what the Abrahamic covenant is, it's where God makes a covenant or promise to Abraham saying that, hey, I am going to bless you with land and descendants. And I just need you to do one thing for me. Abraham, I just need you to go and to move countries. And so what Abram does is he goes from Haran here and he makes the 426 journey over to Shechem. As you go on uh, through Genesis, you'll see that he went to Bethel and then later on he went to Egypt. But here he makes that, 20, that 426 uh, mile journey over uh, to Shechem. And that's like uh, for us walking from here to Boise. It takes about 16 days for that journey, uh, for, for Abraham to complete um, that journey. And so here in Genesis chapter 12, God is saying, hey, Abraham, it's time. It's time for you to make a change. It's time for you to step out. Everyone say, it's time. So there's a couple uh, reasons why we don't like change. There's two reasons in particular. Uh, there's the fear of the unknown and comfort. Don't ask me what was in this box that I had to buy in order to get this, but just let's just focus on the fear and comfort, okay? So uh, two uh, reasons why we don't like change, fear and comfort. 
We don't like, we, see, we want God to tell us everything that's going to happen before it happens, before we go into the next season. We want him to tell us, hey, okay, you're gonna have this conversation with the person and that's gonna lead to this open door and then you're gonna get this job and then you're gonna go here and move here and move there. And we want him to tell us every single thing, but the reality is he doesn't. So there's fear of the unknown and there's also um, comfort. We love to be in the comfort zone. We love that paycheck because it's really nice. We love the schedule because it's really, really nice. But because we are followers of Jesus, when we gave our life to Jesus, what died on the cross was our comfort. See, Jesus didn't, uh, wasn't there on the cross looking at the nails going through his hand. And he was like, that's a, that's a pretty comfy nail right there. Like, that's really, really nice. No, oh, that blood going down the, you know, my head with the crown of thorns, that's, that's pretty comfy. You should get one. Target has them, buy one, get one free. He didn't say that at all. What Jesus did is he stepped out of the comfort of heaven and into humanity, into this world to die for you and for me. And so for us, it's time to step out of the fear. It's time for us to step out of the comfort and into the change that God is trying to lead us to, into the new beginnings with faith. Because it does take faith for us to step out of comfort, for us to step out into the unknown. In Hebrews chapter 11 is known as the hall of faith. It goes through a, a list of individuals that walked by faith. And one of them in particular was Abraham. In, Genesis, or sorry, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse eight, it says, it was by faith. Everyone say by faith. by faith. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and to go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. Get this right here. He went without knowing where he was going. Abraham left his country. He stepped out into the unknown without knowing where he was going. Genesis chapter 12, verse one tells us this. The Lord said to Abram, go from your country, your people and your father's household to the land that I will show you, not the land that I have shown you. What he's telling, what God is telling Abraham is he's telling him, hey, I need you. I know you're pretty comfortable right now, but I need you to step out of the comfort, to step out of that fear and step into the new, step into the new beginnings that he has for us by faith. And in order to do that, in order to step out, what that requires of us is it requires us to let go. It's time to let go. Everyone say, it's time. It's time for us to let go. Don't worry, this isn't a bag of trash, okay? There's just pillows in here. Um, but uh, in order for us to go towards the change that God has for us, not only do we need to step out, but we also have to let go because it's easy for us it's easy for us to step out of things while still holding on to the old things that God is trying to transition us from. We have to not only step out, but we have to let go of things. In Genesis chapter 12, verse one, uh, it says this here, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Now, every, uh, every time after church, after Sunday, what I typically do is I drive over to Cordon Lane, go to a coffee shop, hang out there, chill, relax, just do my thing, walk around and stuff. And last week in particular, it was the, um, I went to Cordon Lane and uh, they had the Ironman race. If you don't know what the Ironman race is, is you uh, swim a couple miles, you bike a couple miles, and then you run a couple miles. And so what I did is I uh, went to the finish line and I just watched people finishing, finishing uh, the race. 
And there was two thoughts uh, that came to mind as I was watching these people. The first one was, I will never do this ever again. I don't understand why people would do this. And then the second one was, I just noticed how they weren't carrying a lot. While it, it is a long race and they have a certain amount of time, I believe it's eight and a half hours, but they're not carrying pounds of water or a ton of uh, protein bars or a lot of energy drinks. They're just going uh, with, with, they're minimalist because they don't wanna have to carry all this weight because what it'll do is it'll slow them down. And God has a grace for each and every one of us. It's, it's life. And life can be great and butterflies and rainbows and it can just be smooth and we're just going and flowing and it's beautiful and it's great. But there's other times when life is really, really hard. When the terrain changes, when we constantly have to go uphill and then downhill and then uphill and then downhill and then there's storms and it's rainy and windy, life can be difficult sometimes. And when there's seasonal changes, what we have to do is we have to learn to let go. The change between winter and summer, it would be really, really weird if we're going through summer and carrying and holding our snow boots and our big jacket and we're just like, hey, just in case, right? That would be really, really weird. And in the same way, as we go through seasonal changes, we have to learn to let go of certain things. Uh, I've got my first uh, high school reunion, my 10 year reunion coming up in three, four years. Um, and I am, yeah, I know I'm getting really old. Um, and uh, I've seen a lot of shows of like high, you know, high school reunions and there's always that one guy, right? That is just holding on to the glory days. That's still wearing his varsity jacket. And he's like, yeah, you remember that, you know, the championship back in 89? Yeah, that was a good throw, wasn't it? You know, that guy, you know, jibber jacker, you know, really uh, caught that and it was a touchdown and we won, right? But you think like that dude just needs to move on. What he needs to do is he needs to get a life and he needs to step out and he needs to let go of the old. In Luke chapter nine, verse 23, it says, then he said to the crowd, Jesus saying this, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross daily and follow me. What we have to do is we have to let go of our own way of how we think life should be, of the things that we think we need to do, of the things that we think is wise uh, for us to go into this next step, this next season. And what God was asking Abraham to do is he's saying, hey, I need you to leave. I need you to let go of your country, your people, and your father's household. And in my life, there's been times where I've had to let go of relationships, let go of pain and letting go of dreams. And what's required of that to let go is trusting God, trusting who he is, trusting that God is a God that knows what he's doing, trusting him as he's leading us through change. And so it's time to step out. It's time to let go and it's time to say yes. Everyone say, it's time. time. So after God tells Abraham all that he's gonna do, it says this in verse four of Genesis 12. It says, so Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. So this here, this scripture here, is Abraham embracing the change that God has and it's him saying yes. He's not fighting what God is trying to do. He's saying yes to God. And in order to say yes to God, that requires us to say no to other things. Abraham is saying no to staying uh, where his dad's burial site is. He's saying no to staying with family. He's saying no to the land that is most familiar to him. And for me, two years ago, I had to go through that same thing. I can relate to Abraham. 
I had to say yes to a change that God was leading me through. I had to say yes to moving away, to leaving a familiar place that I had known my entire life, leaving friendships that I had built over the years and saying yes to moving to a city that I'd never heard of, Liberty Lake, Washington. And was it easy? No. Was it worth it? Jury's still out on that. Um, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding though. But yes, it, it was worth it. And there's a, a, a preacher saying that says that God isn't looking for ability. What he's looking for is availability. See, God is looking for people that uh, when he says, hey, it's time to step out, we step out. He's looking for people when he says, it's time to let go, we let go. He's looking for people to say, uh, he's looking for people when he says he needs us to say yes, we say yes. He's looking for people that are willing to go through the change, that are willing to go towards the new that he has for us, the new that he's trying to bring, those new dreams, that new hope, that new healing, that new revelation, the new promises, the new miracles, and even even as a church, the new building that we're trying to go into. It's time. God is wanting to do new things. Isaiah chapter uh, 43 verse 19 says, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God wants to do new things in our life and it's time. It's time to step out. It's time to let go. It's time to say yes to the change that God is leading us to. See, change is actually, I think, is the destination. It's not necessarily the journey that we go to or that we have to go through in order to get to from where we are right now to where God is taking us. And so it's time not just to step out, not just to let go, not just to say yes, but it's time to transition. Everyone say, it's time. time. Romans chapter 12, verse two says, do not conform, everyone say conform. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. Everyone say transformed transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and his perfect will. See, what we do is we as humans love to conform. But what God wants to do, God wants us to take us through the transition, through the process, toward the change, toward the transformation of being new creations, new creations who would be washed and forgiven by the blood of Jesus, new creations who will walk in freedom and wholeness, new creations who will rest in his presence, new creations who will walk in authority that's found in Jesus, new creations who can be filled with the Holy Spirit, new creations who can step out, new creations who will let go and say yes to the transition, to the transformation that God is leading us to. And today, what I wanna do, I wanna leave us with the question is what is God asking you to change? What is God asking you to step out of? What is he asking you to let go of? What's he asking you to say yes to and to transition toward? See, change is not always bad. See, there's, there's good change. We as a church are going through change. We're going through the process of changing our building from here down a block away to a new building that we're going to build. But change, I believe, reminds us that we are not in control. But at the same time, it reminds us that we serve a God who is in control, that he is the God that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the God that is with us when everything in life is good, but he's also with us when things aren't easy 
and we're going through transition and change. And he's there holding our hand. And so today as I finish and we go into worship, I wanna pray for two groups of people. So can we all stand up really quick? I wanna pray for two groups of people. The first group is those that go, are going through right now a season of change. Whether it's change that you are, uh, that you want, or maybe it's just change that you, you are going through and it's really, really hard. And so if you are going through a season of change right now, I wanna pray for you. And if that's you, I want you to just raise your hand and I just wanna pray for you right now. Is anyone going through a season of change? Amen, yes. Jesus, I pray for these, these individuals that are going through a change right now, God. I pray that you would help them, God. Pray that you would give them strength and comfort in this season. And I pray that you would give them courage and the strength to be able to step out, to be able to let go. Give them the strength to be able to say yes to what you want, God, and to say yes to the process and the transition, God. Be with your children, God, and help them in this season. Amen. The second group of people that I wanna pray for is a group of people who want to make the ultimate change. The change where the guilt and the shame and the sin is no longer on you, but it is on Jesus. The change where not only where you decide that your life isn't yours anymore, that it's now Jesus's. The change of receiving forgiveness and wholeness and hope and purpose and joy. If you've never made that decision for this ultimate change in your life, I wanna pray for you. And so with every uh, eye closed and head bowed, if that's you and you've never made that decision, that ultimate decision to change your life, I want you to raise your hand and then just bring it back down. Is there anyone that's willing to make that change? Amen. I wanna say a prayer and would you just repeat after me, please? Lord Jesus, I come to you a sinner. And I repent of my sins. And I give you my life today. I believe that you died on the cross and three days later you rose from the grave. Today I confess you as Lord and as Savior of my life. Help me, Jesus. Be with me all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you raised your hand or if you said that prayer for the first time, uh, we've got our prayer partners in the back uh, that are willing to pray for you and to pray with you in this season. Please don't leave here without prayer because I know that change can be hard, it can be scary and it can be difficult, but we serve a God that is the same yesterday, today and forever and He is constant. He is our firm foundation. And so again, we're willing to pray for you and to pray with you. Let's go ahead and let's close in worship this morning.